Hello there. Uh, welcome back to Zimsec uh, All Level Commerce. Uh, in this video, uh, we want to look at uh, three aspects. Uh, we are going to look at uh, mass production. Uh, we are going to look at specialization and also uh, we are going to look at factors of production. So um, these are three aspects that we are going to look at according to uh, this video. And please, uh, let's not forget uh, to subscribe and share to our channel. Uh, let's not forget to uh, share the link to our colleagues who are doing All Level Commerce. Uh, as for this video, we are going to start on mass app production. So uh, going to our information uh, that we have according to this uh, video, we are going to start by uh, trying to explain what exactly we mean by uh, mass app production. So uh, you would see that mass production generally is uh, 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 producing uh, in large uh, quantities. So uh, producing large quantities is uh, what we call mass production. Uh, so um, uh, the explanation that we have here uh, is that uh, it, uh, it is uh, the making of goods in large quantities and the provision of services on a large scale. So basically, uh, this is an uh, explanation that we have uh, that is uh, explaining mass production. Then uh, on the uh, period that we are given a definition of key terms, so these are the key terms that we are going to use uh, interchangeably as you go uh, through the syllabus of uh, ZIMSEC or level commerce. So we are going to start on specialization and try to understand exactly what we mean by specialization. So you see that specialization uh, becomes, um, it comes as a, as a process of concentrating uh, on uh, concentrating on a particular subject or skill. Uh, we can also define it as a, a process of concentrating uh, to become an expert. So uh, in a certain area, that is uh, uh, the uh, meaning that we have in terms of, uh, general meaning that we have in terms of specialization. Uh, so you see that uh, it, it, it is also a particular area uh, which someone are concentrate on. Uh, so when uh, you concentrate on that particular area, you will become an expert in that area. So basically, uh, that's uh, the uh, the basic explanation that we can give in terms of uh, specialization. So the, the explanation that we have according to this video is that this is concentrating on doing something uh, in which one is good at. So obviously, uh, that's something that we are concentrating on doing. You should be good at it so that you can become an expert in that particular area or particular field. So basically, that's what we have in terms of uh, specialization. Then we have, we have got another term uh, that we have, which is standardization. So obviously, uh, we also need to understand what, what is standardization. But the standardization, basically, uh, it's a process of making something conform uh, to a standard. So uh, we can also try to define it uh, from another point of view by saying uh, it's a process of making things uh, of the same type so that they have the same uh, features. We are trying to make uh, 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 things of the same type so that they can have the same features you are trying to standardize. That's standardization. So uh, that's what we have. And then according to this question that we are having here, it uh, is making of identical goods. That is, uh, so those identical goods should have uh, the same features. For example, we are given a uh, uh, you are making an electrical pin, you are making plants, uh, window, door handles, uh, you are making them so that they become uh, the same. Uh, if they are plants, uh, they uh, have the same feature. So basically, that's what we have. So uh, we go to the next part where we are talking about simplification. So simplification basically is the process of making something simpler or easier. Or we can uh, just call it uh, the process of making something easier uh, to do or understand. So basically, the simplification uh, or to make something are less complicated and therefore easier to do. That's a simplification. So uh, according to the expression that we have uh, here, it reads a process and task are easier to perform. We are making them easier uh, or simpler. Uh, so basically, uh, that's what we have. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the explanation uh, that we have here. Then uh, we, have been, uh, we have explained what is mass production, but now we want to look at the uh, benefits of mass production. Uh, what advantages uh, can we deduce uh, from producing in large quantities? So uh, our manufacturing large quantities. Uh, so uh, we have uh, various uh, benefits that are listed there that we just need to go through. The first one is the low cost of production resulting in low price. So if you produce in large quantities, you are going to face a uh, low cost of production. So this is uh, just explained uh, from the point of view of our economies of scale, whereby we are saying you are producing large quantities. So obviously, you are going to spread uh, the uh, fixed cost over a number of units. So obviously, uh, the cost will be reduced if you produce uh, in large quantities. So uh, for example, uh, rent uh, is an expense. Uh, you are just going uh, to pay the same rent uh, whether you produce 100 units or you produce 10,000 units. So if you produce 10,000 units, it becomes a, a benefit to you because we have produced more, you are going to gain more revenue, uh, but we are going to uh, pay the same rent uh, with the someone who is producing 100 units. So from that point of view, you can understand how uh, it, it becomes an advantage. So um, uh, this is uh, what we have in terms of um, the first point. The second point is saying goods are always available. Obviously, you are producing that quantity, so the availability also is enhanced, so goods are always available. Then I improve standards of living, obviously, and then we've got uh, 
that leads to automation and mechanization. So we have got the new terms that are coming in. We have got automation, we have got mechanization. So we also need to understand uh, automation so that we can be able to see how our mass production can lead us to automation. But basically, we are saying uh, as we are producing more in large quantities uh, uh, during mass production, uh, obviously, uh, we are going to engage uh, the use of automated machines so that we produce more. So that is automation. So automation, basically, uh, we are saying uh, in terms of its explanation, uh, it's a wide range of technologies uh, that reduce human uh, intervention in the process. So if you are using a wide range of technologies, uh, we are engaging in automation. So it's the use of uh, the use or introduction of aut aut automatic equipment in manufacturing. That's automation. Uh, we are in introducing uh, automatic equipment in manufacturing, uh, be it uh, in other processes uh, that we have. So uh, basically, it is the application of technology. So that's automation. So that's the expression that we put automation. Then uh, if you look at mechanization, now mechanization becomes uh, a, uh, a movement that is taking place uh, from uh, using uh, uh, the, you can say, human labor or using hands uh, to using machines. So that becomes mechanization. So mechanization is a shift that is taking place. So we are saying mechanization is the process of changing from working largely or exclusively on hands are to use of machines. So that's kind of that's mechanization. So you cannot be able to differentiate between automation and a mechanization. So um, we are saying automation and mechanization, uh, they are, are engaged uh, in the process of mass production. For you to do mass production, to produce large quantities, you should engage automation and mechanization. So which is a good thing is uh, we are saying Automation and mechanization also, on the other hand, uh, another benefit that we can deduce is that uh, it's going to enhance efficiency. That is the reduction of our cost. We are going to produce at the least possible cost because we are using machines. That's uh, exactly uh, what we have. Uh, so that's uh, the point that we have. Then we've got a list to standardization of um, our products. So standardization of products, I said, we are, using, we are producing the similar products. Uh, we are the, uh, there are no deviations in terms of the final product that we are going to produce. Uh, we are going to have similar products being produced, uh, which is a very important thing. So uh, this is another benefit that we can deduce from mass production. Then we've got a list to simplification of processes, and then leads to specialization of workers, and then leads to uh, leads to trade. Obviously, we can explain in terms of the list to trade. Uh, we are producing large quantities, so we can, uh, we are going, at the end of the day, we are going to have some surpluses, which we are going to maybe export. Uh, because uh, they are surpluses. Uh, so uh, that's how it can lead to trends. So uh, it's going to increase our exports. And then by increasing our exports, we are engaging in trends. So basically, that's what we have. Then uh, we have uh, the next uh, aspect that we want to look at is specialization. We have tried to uh, define specialization. So uh, we are uh, under the other specialization, we have got an explanation that we have there, which is uh, it is a result of a division of labor that results in a worker having their particular skills. Uh, to become uh, experts. So uh, basically, uh, that's the interaction that we have. But then we have got the benefits of specialization. What, uh, what uh, do we gain from our specialization? So uh, very important. So we are having, uh, we are having some uh, points that we have there uh, that we need to go through uh, that are, are explaining our benefits of uh, specialization. But basically, we we define the specialization as the uh, process of are uh, concentrating on or becoming an expert in a particular subject. So we are we are saying um, if uh, we are producing uh, we are if we are producing a certain product, we specialize in producing that uh, product only. That that is specialization. Then we become experts in that in producing that product. So uh, what is the benefit that we can deduce from that? Uh, we are saying on the first point, the same workers and firms become experts in a particular job. So it becomes so the workers that are that are specializing. They become experts in that particular uh, field or job. So basically, uh, that's the first one uh, that we are having there. Uh, so I've got the second one. We can acquire specific skills faster. Uh, you, you acquire it faster because you are doing the same thing uh, time and again. So obviously, the skills is, is uh, the probability of gaining uh, of uh, uh, comprehending uh, the skill is going to be high. So this is what we have done. Third point: workers become more proficient and productive in the area in their areas of specialization, which is true. Employers are able to fit workers in a particular job categories based on their aptitudes and skills. And then our next one: specialist workers are able to communicate and share ideas pertinent to their work via workshops. Uh, so those are some of the uh, benefits that we can uh, deduce from specialization. We have various uh, benefits that we have there. And then uh, we can just maybe try to look at the last one: surplus goods are produced. Of course, if you specialize, it means that we're going to produce some larger quantities. And then second from last, we have got the result in faster development of new technology, uh, which is the result of a specialization. So this is what we have in terms of uh, specialization, and these are benefits of specialization. So going on, 
that is the next part that we want to look at uh, according to this video. Uh, we are going to look at uh, uh, disadvantages now of specialization. What disadvantages can we uh, deduce for specialization? We have said uh, other specialization, we are going to have automation uh, coming into play. So uh, that automation will lead to unemployment. Remember, on automation, we are saying we are using uh, computerized equipment, which, which well, of course, which uh, the, that computerized equipment is going to replace human labor. So by replacing human labor, we're going to have some employees being unemployed. Uh, so obviously, uh, it leads to unemployment. That is some uh, something that we can uh, try to uh, come up with as a disadvantage or a cost now, uh, obviously, to the society. And then uh, we go to the next one, the results in immobility of labor. Uh, you are specialized, which means you are only confined in that particular field that you become an expert. You can uh, not be flexible, but work another type of job. So uh, that, uh, that's where the immobility is coming from. You are not mobile in terms of labor, uh, in terms of changing occupations, uh, in terms of uh, changing jobs. You cannot easily change a job. So this is the immobility that is coming into play. So uh, we go to the next part. We have got lack of uh, craftsmanship. Uh, we uh, have also craftsmanship coming into play. We need to understand uh, what exactly uh, do we mean uh, by uh, craftsmanship. But you would see that craftsmanship is the quality uh, the quality of, of, of design and work are shown in something made by hand. So uh, it means um, there is an input of hand in craftsmanship. So, uh, but in specialization now, there is uh, an enhancement or encouragement of the use of, uh, uh, there's mechanization, there's automation. So obviously, uh, the use of hand is going to be a uh, discouraged, which uh, is going to be uh, a weakness in terms of craftsmanship. So that's why we are saying lack of craftsmanship. So, uh, that's what we have. Then next one leads to limited choice of goods. Uh, it's a yeah, limited choice of goods because uh, we are saying we are specializing. We are producing a certain a product, uh, producing product A only. Uh, so we can only produce product A and become experts in producing product A. So um, we are not going to produce variety. So that uh, becomes a problem. A uh, limited choice and going to affect the consumers. Consumers need a a wide range and a, a choice base. So basically, that's what we have. Then we've got next point, retraining of specialist workers is expensive. So um, as you become an expert in a particular field, you need to be retrained from time to, uh, uh, time, to time to time so that you keep abreast uh, with the uh, current skills that are required. Remember, our products become uh, uh, are modified from time to time. A product that were consumed uh, in 1960, I know the same product that, are, that were consumed in 1980, the uh, same is applies to uh, around 2000, the same applies to the current product that are being consumed. The same product will change from time to time. So there is need for retraining of those uh, specialist workers who are experts in a particular field. So it's very expensive, so it becomes a disadvantage. So um, we go to the next one, repetitive task are boring. Uh, there is the issue of boredom uh, on the part of workers if they're going to do the same thing time and again, time and again. So they can, it can, they can never be motivated. They tend to uh, overprotect themselves resulting in people not sharing ideas and skills and not wanting to know what others are doing. Uh, so uh, this is the issue of individualism that can be there, which is a characteristic of, us, uh, of specialists that they uh, become, become confined to what they are only doing. They want, don't want to share with others so that they become the best uh, out of the people that are there. So basically, that becomes a disadvantage uh, of uh, being a reserved and uh, you only uh, confine yourself to what you know. So basically, this is what we have. Then um, the, on the last part, we are going to look at the aspect of factors of production. So we want to start by understanding exactly what we mean by factors of production so that we can be able to uh, come up with those uh, 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 examples of factors of production that we have. So uh, basically, when we're talking about factors of production, uh, these are also called resources, or we can call them inputs. Uh, these are uh, the factors of production are described uh, describes what is used in the production. What is used in the production uh, describes as factors of production. So um, they are, uh, what is being used in the production process are to produce output. That is goods and services. The output that we are talking about, we are talking about goods and services. So uh, basically, we are saying factors of production, they are resources uh, people use to produce goods and services. Basically, that's what we have. Uh, so, um, so they come as a building a blocks of the economy. They are building blocks of the economy. Without factors of production, you are not going to produce anything because well, those are the resources that you use uh, to produce those goods and services. So basically, that's what we have. So now, um, on factors of production, we are going to start with uh, the four factors of production that we have. We have got land, we have got labor, we have got capital, we have got entrepreneurship. So these are the four factors that we have. So obviously, uh, we have got a table that we have there. We have got three columns of factor, description, and then reward. So what reward do you, do you get from owning 
uh, this fingers conduction. Well, let's start with the lens as a factor of conduction. That all the description we are saying, uh, lens is described as the site on which production takes place, including all the natural resources used in the production of food. So very important that natural resources also they fall under uh, land. Uh, natural resources used in the production of goods. Then we are given a, a given examples of land. We've got agricultural lands, we've got seas, we've got lakes, we've got forests. Those are examples of land. And then what is the what did you gain from owning land? land? Obviously, uh, land becomes the reward. So the factor incomes. Uh, it can be they can be explained again as factor cost. Because uh what is the income to you can be a cost to the other. For example, we're talking about rent for, to the one who is renting uh, it's a cost, rent becomes a cost. But to the one uh, who owns the land, uh, it becomes a reward. So uh, that's uh, what we have. So um, we go to the next part where we are saying uh, labor is a factor of production. And uh, the description that we have uh, of labor is that is the effort put by people in the production of goods. So uh, basically, that's what we have. And labor, we know that uh, it's, uh, it describes workers. Uh, second point is saying it can be in, in the form of body, which is physical, or mind. So uh, not only uh, do we describe labor as physical, but we can uh, describe it from another point of view as uh, as uh, the effort, a mental effort also can also be a labor. So this is what we have. So what, what do you gain from uh, 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 providing labor? You get a reward for wages and salary. So this is uh, what we have as our reward. Uh, as we explained that uh, on, the, on the reward, you can uh, in, uh, uh, use a substitute term of factor income, you can also use a factor cost, uh, which is also correct. So on the uh, third part, we've got capital as a factor of production. And then on the description, we are saying, uh, we'll, we'll uh, put aside for the production of, of feather wealth. Uh, so anything that is put aside for the production is capital. Example, what money is capital, plant and equipment. Uh, so every non current asset, every fixed asset is part of capital. And uh, what what do you uh, gain from owning capital? Interest uh, becomes a uh, reward. So this is uh, what we have. The uh, last part, we've got entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship is just the knowledge of, knowledge of operating the business, the knowledge of operating, the, uh, the know-how of operating the business is entrepreneurship. So this one thing that we have, the ability to run a business is the knowledge. You have the knowledge to run a business. Second point, it requires people who are willing and able to take risks in investing money, time, and effort in, in utilizing land, labor, and capital. That's what we have. So um, for you uh, to be able to connect all the dots in terms of other factors of production, you should have the knowledge. That is described by entrepreneurship. So what do you gain from that? So after being able to run a business, you are going to earn profit. That becomes the reward. So basically, we have got the reward as a profit. And this marks the end of our video. Thank you for listening. And please, let's not forget what we emphasized in the beginning of the video. Let's subscribe. Let's share. Let's share the link to our colleagues who are doing uh, uh, commerce, seems at all level. Let's stay tuned. More typical examination questions will be uploaded in this channel as you approach exams. And uh, we are going to cover the syllabus of SimSec uh all level so let's stay tuned let's get notified let's subscribe let's turn on the not notification button so that when you upload new videos to get notified as for this video i'm signing out let's meet again in the next video